This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It feels like we've had a lot of low-scoring primetime games so far this year in 2023, but on Sunday or Monday night, tonight, between the Broncos and the Bills, a pretty high total over a FanDuel Sportsbook, 47.5 for that game, and will we actually see an over, potentially? We'll talk about that today in previewing Monday Night Football. Ryan Williams is with us for today to break down that game, talk some player props at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll break down the spread, the total, and much more to get you ready to close out your week on a high note. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, fresh off a fantastic week in DFS. So welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, we're doing great, Jim. We're doing great. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm wearing a Steelers shirt, should be wearing a Cowboys shirt. Uh, shout out to vintage Brandon <laughs> Cooks coming through uh, for the squad yesterday. Just un- unbelievable. And, you know, I talked about or I didn't talk about because we didn't talk about DFS last week. But I was talking with other people about how I didn't know what to do yesterday. Like yesterday yes. just felt like a day where it, anything could happen. And th- just the good teams were in great spots. And, you know, I thought about going to the Ravens again. But uh, but yeah, you know, shout out to uh Shout out to Dallas taking uh, the Giants to the woodshed, woodshed once again uh, and, and making it a profitable day for the Williams household. I'm happy to hear it. Love to hear it. You mentioned Brandon Cooks. And like there were a couple times yesterday where I confused Brandon Cooks for Kevontae Turpin. And Kevontae Turpin is like the burstiest, wildest guy in the league as far as like speed. And if I'm confusing Brandon Cooks for him in 2023... That right. bodes well for the Cowboys because if Brandon Cooks can do what he's doing while CeeDee Lamb looks like a top three receiver in football, well, top five receiver in football, like that's going to probably bode well for them, at least against, you know, if they can play the Giants every week. Right, exactly. I mean, that's what would be favorable for, the, for them, for McCarthy and, and Jerry Jones, most likely. Absolutely. It was fun to watch. I'm glad that you were able to benefit from it. And uh, hopefully we can uh, close out your weekend on high note, too, with this Broncos at Bills game. We're going to break down Broncos and Bills here in just one second to get you ready for some Monday night football. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are here every weekday, Monday through Friday, in addition to some one-off shows from Tom Vecchio to preview Thursday and Sunday night football. All those shows are right here in the Covering the spread a podcast feed if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or over on spotify as well you can find the daily shows here on fanduel tv plus and the fanduel youtube page score early this nfl season with fanduel america's number one sportsbook right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text open Y in New York. 
Let's dig in now to the Broncos at the Bills right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Bills are seven point favorites. Total in this game is 47 and a half. And Ryan, this spread was seven and a half earlier on this week, but it since tightened by a half point. It's now seven. Do you think that movement in Denver's favor is the right direction here? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, is, does it move in Denver's favor or does it move in Buffalo's favor, Jim? You know, because it's like, the wins of Buffalo, and I know the past two uh, wins have not hit this uh, hit this spread of seven. But when we're talking about traditionally, like with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills winning, like they go out and they win by seven points or more. Like that's what they were doing at the beginning of the season. That's what they've done historically. And so like the seven and a half really did not feel great for me to want to take Buffalo at home here. But now that it's at seven. I'm like, yeah, I could probably I could probably ride with that number. Uh, Denver is coming off of their bye. So, you know, you kind of think about what what kind of changes that they have made. But this is a hostile environment to have to play in. You know, you're looking at the Buffalo Bills there. And we talked about it with the AFC, like the Chiefs weren't playing, you know, uh, yesterday, the the Ravens lose a, a tough one to the Browns. The Bengals, you know, were, you know, reeling um, after they won four straight. And so the Bills have a chance to kind of, you know, put themselves back into the conversation here at home. And, you know, I think that they'd be able to do so uh, against Sean Payton, Russell Wilson and company. And so while, you know, the hook might lend in, in Denver's favor and we have a lot of, you know, the public money uh, coming on to Denver um, at that seven number. And we'll see if we can trust Russell Wilson, but I, I just have not been able to uh, to trust the Broncos in some time. And you talk about you know playing a team consistently, like we're literally like for the Kansas City Chiefs game, holding the Chiefs to twenty seven points um, across two games, and I just. You know, uh, the the Chiefs are the are the Chiefs, but they also haven't looked like themselves this year as well, too. So are we putting more stock into those games than we should be? Um, and let's see what Buffalo has in the hopper. But I feel like they're they're going to be reeling and, and want to showcase uh, that they still belong in the conversation on Monday night. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. I think this spread is a little bit light right now. Uh, I, I did lay it seven and a half personally when it was there, so it doesn't feel great that it moved back to seven. But the reason that I was willing to lay that was because, A, my model does show a lot of value there. I've got the bills by double digits. So getting it seven and a half even was kind of, you know, it's not a number you love, but I do think that it's there for a reason. And that reason is that this bill's offense is still playing very good football. The defense they're struggling, and I think that's sustainable. I think they will continue to struggle given that all the key players they've lost defensively. I don't expect them to suddenly turn things around there, but do we trust Russell Wilson and Sean Payton to be the team that like punishes them for their middling level defense. And I personally don't like, we've had a lot of focus on the Denver defense. Like you said, maybe we're wait putting too much weight on that Kansas city game, but also like this offense hasn't been that good. Uh, they're a bit better once you adjust for opponents, so, like, they're not bad, but if I look at just my 2023 numbers on offense, uh, they are currently my 18th ranked offense um, by my numbers. Again, that's just for 2023. I had a decent prior of them coming into this year, uh, you know, showing faith in Russell Wilson, faith in Sean Payton. So they're about the same if you include the prior, but I don't know. I just, I just don't have a, a lot of faith that they will be the team that really – exposes the flaws in this bills team the bills like you said keep their foot on the gas even when they're up because probably because they can't run the football um so they kind of have to keep throwing but like they do have a tendency to throttle teams so i did lay the seven and a half when it was there so don't feel great about it it moving against me with it going back to seven but that's why I was there is that this this Bills team this offense is still very good I mentioned Denver is 18th in offense for me Buffalo second with no prior involved. Uh, they're behind San Francisco and above Miami. That's where they sit right now for me. So that's why I'm there. And also, Ryan, when you combine the Bills offense with still skepticism around the, the Broncos defense with the large spread, I actually did take the over when it was at 47. Now, 47 and yeah. a half, I can't get there anymore uh, because I've got a 49.39. So it's still a bit of value on my side uh, with regards to the total. But like, Maybe not a, uh, as much there. 47 is a key number. So what's the read on this total with it now up to 47 and a half? Yeah, 47 and a half. Uh, we, we need Buffalo putting up 30 points. Like mm -hmm. it, that's just right. how I feel um, mm -hmm. with, with this with this spread. I, I, can, can we get, 
you know, Russell Wilson to to dig back into the time chamber and and really come out here and you know get put up twenty one points for uh for for Denver, sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we want four scores here, our score in every quarter from from Buffalo at, at minimum uh, to get to the twenty eight thirty threshold in order to get this going. Now, I will say, you know, part of what Buffalo, part of what Buffalo's Achilles Hill has been is they have not been able to start games out early in the way that they'd want to. I think, you know, yeah. over the course of their five games, uh, they've only had four, the past five games, they've only had four first half touchdowns. And that's just not what we know of the Buffalo Bills. Like they have to come out here. They have to come out firing. If we get the Buffalo Bills putting up like 14 points or something like that in the first quarter, like 21 points in the first half, I think we're feeling good about that 47 and a half number. But that's kind of what we're, that's what we're going to go for. I'm, I'm willing to kind of take that shot because I actually like both passing quarterback props in this matchup. So okay. I'm going to take the 47 and a half and go off of the reservation of what we normally been doing with the unders hitting at an insane rate. I believe we only have one Monday night football game this year that's hit on the over. Um, everyone else has been on the under and primetime unders are just hitting at an insane rate this year. So, uh, but what's, you know, what's, what's not to like there. I mean, it is Buffalo at home and, you know, the type of things that, you know, leading us into week 10, it was just like, it, again, you got to get you got to get some of these like narratives and some of the things that have happened like all season just kind of out of your out of your brain out of your memory when we're going into new weeks and like this would not be a game where you know we would be surprised if buffalo put up like 35 points at home in a favorable matchup against a denver team that we have not been able to trust since russell wilson has been there as the quarterback so yeah i'm i'm riding with you jim uh i i like the 47 and a half but in that same vein I'm trying to get every type of, you know, bonanza number that I can get um, for the Bills to be able to put up points in this in this manner, because I feel like they're going to they're going to carry that baton. Well, let's talk about it. then. Let's talk about that Bills offense, and break down some player props on their side of things. Dalton Kincaid, Cleo Shakir both gotten pretty big boost recently uh, with Dawson Knox on IR. So let's talk about the Bills side of things, Ryan, given where things are right now, where do you see value for Bills props for tonight? Yeah, well, I think it's 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 on the two guys that you mentioned uh, with Dawson Knox being out. You know, pretty favorable matchup for for Dalton Kincaid here. Uh, this guy has been absolutely incredible. I I don't know what the number off the top of my head, but his catch rate has to be like eighty percent or above when yeah. being targeted. This dude just does not. It, it, they're they're linking up every time that the ball comes his way. It's it's been incredible. I love his reception number uh, at five and a half on the over plus money there. Um, I just feel like this is a matchup where he could get involved against Denver, um, who's kind of you know they're not one of the worst teams against tight ends, but they do allow you know a, a little bit of production there uh, to the tight end group. And uh, you know year of the rookie tight end. I know I, yeah. I think you saw. You sent a tweet out uh, last night um, about the rookie tight ends, and it's just incredible. And I don't even really think of Dalton Kincaid uh, as a tight end. He's he's a wide yeah. receiver. He's getting in line out wide. Uh, so love the Dalton Kincaid props. I am going to be interested in the other guys, not Stefan Diggs, too, from the wide receiver standpoint. Patrick has Patrick Sertan, uh, probably going to be on Stefan Diggs there, I, I would think. I mean, coming out of the bye, like, what do you want to do? You want to stop the number one receiver? So they'll do their best. Uh, but, you know, Stefan Diggs is Stefan Diggs. But Gabriel Davis and Khalil Shakir's numbers just aren't high enough. Like, especially if I'm expecting points, if I'm expecting, you know, uh, Buffalo to kind of come out here and be able to move the ball, uh, then I'm, I'm liking Shakir's number. I'm liking Gabe Davis' number. Gabe Davis's air yards, like, are just really insane. Um, so he could hit this, you know, 39 and a half number on two catches like that's just the type of of player that he is um Khalil Shakir has just been getting more involved without Dawson Knox being around he has four receptions I believe in three straight games and you know his reception number again comes in at three and a half uh at plus money I like Shakir um to hit that two plus 130 32 on that number as well so yeah I mean it's pretty much all action like I, I, we can talk about it Jim I just have I don't know the last time that I've put hard earned money on a Buffalo Bills running back to do anything of the nature outside of maybe score a touchdown with like Latavius Murray. Um, but like, I just, the volume is just, it's yeah. just not there. Like maybe you could take some shots on James Cook from his receiving number, but I just, I just never can get behind them. Like this team wants to pass. They want to pass three out of four times when you give them the chance, like passing is just as good as rushing uh, to this offense. And so for me, it's getting all the props that I can on their pass catchers.
And I think you're taking the right props with them because of the archetype of players that those are. So like you mentioned the Kincaid reception prop, you know, five and a half receptions is a lot. And you mentioned his catch rate. And a lot of times when a guy has a high catch rate, you expect regression. But Kincaid does not get deep targets. They are all near the line of scrimmage. And those are high percentage throws. So, you know, it's not six targets mean six receptions, but it's kind of along that vein where he's going to have a higher catch rate than usual as a result of where he gets his targets at. So I think that's a good thing for him. Shakir, exact same thing where he's a slot guy gets a lot of stuff towards the line of scrimmage. So I want the reception props in those guys versus the yardage props. So Shakir over three and a half plus plus one thirty two, Kincaid over five and a half plus one fourteen. talking about Gabe Davis, uh, the baseline number you mentioned 39 and a half. I think if I want to go to Gabe, that's where I go towards the alt numbers because Davis is volatile and that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind volatility if I can benefit from it. And with yep. Davis, I think that's where I think you can. You know, looking at the alt numbers, FanDuel knows this. Like, they're not stupid. Um, you're not getting a ton of extra leeway by going, you know, 60 plus yards is plus 210. That's not a huge number by any means when his baseline number is 39 and a half. So they understand the distribution of the way he gets his, his targets, the way that he gets his yardage. It's more so in chunks versus in small gains. So, but I do think that even though FanDuel is aware of this and they are accounting for that in the way they, they mark them out, I still think I'd want to check out Davis and the alternate markets to, rack up some yardage maybe that means a touchdown bet instead i think he's plus 220 or somewhere around there to score a touchdown but i think that the the upside markets are where you want to go with davis so i think that you're playing it the right way ryan in checking out the reception numbers for kincaid and for shakir but then looking at the receiving yardage numbers and the upside markets for davis i think that's the way i'd want to play things here personally yeah, definitely. And if we're looking at Gabe Davis, longest reception uh, of the game, he comes in at uh, six and a half to one there, uh, plus 650, um, mm -hmm. which I think is is pretty enticing um, to to uh, cash in on that. Yeah. The fact that he's behind Marvin, Marvin Mims, Mims and Jerry yeah. Judy is weird. Um, it's very like Marvin Mims might, might not have a catch. And they've talked about getting his roll up, but like. And they might. So let's talk about the Broncos side of things because Ryan, they have been <laughs> the worst this year. Uh, they have been so frustrating. We're like, you're not a good enough offense to spread things out the way you do. And so like, I hate the Broncos from a, a prop perspective, from a daily fantasy perspective. So you talk me through the Broncos side of things because I want nothing to do with anything tied to them. Yeah. You, <laughs> It actually cracked me up. You know, we always talk about the rundown uh, going into the, going into the shows, and I was looking at it uh, actually this morning. I was late to it, but uh, and you, you talked about the the Broncos spread the ball around, and I was like, Jim made a mistake here. Like he's talking about the Bills, and you know, going <laughs> back through the stats, and it's like, no, actually, uh, the Russell Wilson and, and the Broncos team are just you know getting so many of these of these guys involved, and I just don't know why. Um, you know, at right. some point, I guess it maybe made a little bit of sense uh, when Jerry Judy was thought to be on the trading block and, and what have you and trying to, you know, switch up the teams here. But, you know, they they have two two players uh, that I think should really be touching the ball, you know, every chance that they get. Uh, it's Cortland Sutton. It's Jerry Judy. Um, and they need to be able to find these guys in space against Buffalo, who's been giving up, you know, big plays um, mm -hmm. as, as of recently, you know, to the wide receivers. Cortland, Sumber, Cortland Sutton's number is just wrong to me like this dude has been an absolute catalyst for this offense absolutely insane like catching a touchdown i believe he has a touchdown in six out of eight games this year um really has been hitting his stride with russell wilson like as that security blanket especially with the tight end situation that they have dolchich has been on ir they have adam trotman there you know another sean payton guy um but Cortland sutton at 45 and a half just feels wrong i mean jerry judy you know in the sense of like if Buffalo's putting up, you know, 28, 30 points, they have to pass. Um, Jerry Judy at 52 and a half, you know, makes a lot of sense as well, too. I just, you know, it's just a matter of the completion rate. Like, is Russell Wilson right. going to be able to find these guys or are they just going to have a lot of drives that stall out? But in the, even in that sense, if like Buffalo struggle or Buffalo Denver's struggling, um, I still like Court and Sum Sutton's number um, anywhere that I can get it. The one guy who I just I never know what to do with is Javante Williams, like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, shout out to Javante Williams coming out from coming back from the injury and, and all that he's done to kind of get himself back uh, to to the mold. And it's been great. But like Jaleel McLaughlin is is 
a stud. I hate to say stud, but he's pretty good. Uh, um, And watching him run, I think think Jaleel's number at at rushing and receiving, which you have up here at 23 and a half, like if this game kind of gets out of hand and out of reach, like do they give McLaughlin more reps? They're coming out of the bye week. I think we're going to see some different stuff from Denver. I wonder what that is. Maybe it's using two backs. And so uh, getting some action on, on Jaleel here. Uh, is something that I am kind of interested in. Yeah, McLaughlin, as you mentioned, uh, his number is 23 and a half for rushing plus receiving over his minus 114. Javante Williams there, uh, 74 and a half is minus 114. I have interest in that number because they did use him quite a bit right before their bye week and now has had another week to, to rest up and get that knee healthy from where he was uh, coming off the injury. I just really worry about game script given the 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 way that my numbers show this game playing out so i think that's why mclaughlin interest on your behalf is probably smart uh because it it might not be a great situation to get to javante williams as far as the pass catchers go do you have a preference between sutton and judy uh sutton's number is 45 and a half judy 52 and a half preference for you between those two if you were forced to pick one i I would take sutton okay cool yeah i think that's that's a lower number he's been like he looked has looked like typical Cortland Sutton, like where he's just like mossing dudes like left and right. Like that's just kind of what he does. Um, so I think that that does make a lot of sense. Let's talk some touchdown props, Ryan. Any touchdown props you are digging over at FanDuel Sportsbook for this week? Yeah, uh, I, I think we're looking at uh, Gabe Davis anytime touchdown uh, mm-hmm. plus two twenty. Um, I think he he kind of gets back into the mold uh, this week. It's like you're saying he's boomer bust, but you know on the on the boom games that we get, it, you those do tend to pay off. Um, so I, I find that very interesting. I mean Dalton Kincaid to get the first touchdown of the game uh, at eleven to one. Like what's not to like there? The the Bills actually have four of the top uh, props in in this market. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know if I was looking at the Denver side, I'd possibly be looking at Cortland Sutton there at. 16 to one. Um, he's just been the red zone, red zone target, red zone favorite. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, outside of that, you know, we're taking the usual suspects um, across the board. I do like Josh Allen alt touchdown market. Um, if oh. we're looking at him to throw three touchdowns, it's plus two forty. him to throw four touchdowns is plus eight seventy. Like, you know, I, again, it's, to get to the 47 and a half number, like what does Buffalo need to do? They need to put up points. How are they doing that? I likely think through the air, you know, there is some merit there where you're thinking, okay, does Josh Allen rush one in or, you know, do they get kind of, you know, they get wonky with who they're giving the ball to, but even the shuffle pass that they use like five yards out uh, from the end zone, it, you know, three touchdowns, I feel like it is great. A great number to be on at plus two forty. And then if you're really feeling, if you're really feeling it, then go for that for a touchdown there at plus eight seventy. Okay, I love that. So four plus touchdowns for Josh, four plus passing touchdowns for Josh Allen, plus 870 at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is a very fun number as well. Any other props you want to talk about for tonight, Ryan, before we close up shop? No, I think I think those are those are the main ones. If you if you do, uh, if you are taking the Buffalo side of things, I will say try and get some action on uh, the first half uh, spread there, uh, four and a half. Uh, for Buffalo, minus 105, try and get their first half, you know, uh, points if you can, where you can. I just I just really feel like if Buffalo is going to get this done tonight, they really have to come out early um, and showcase uh, showcase what they can do. All right. That first half spread of Buffalo minus four and a half is minus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. That is all that we have here for today, but do not worry because Ryan is back with us once again for tomorrow. We'll talk about some futures coming out of the all the craziness that went down in week number 10, breaking down thoughts on that and futures we want to grab heading into week 11. So Ryan is back with us for tomorrow, but Ryan for today, thank you once again, as always, congratulations on your very nice weekend in DFS. And hopefully we can uh, finish up with another good night for tonight. Thank you. Yeah, let's finish week 10 strong. Have a good one, everybody. That is Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also find me on threads at Jim Sonnes and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to dig in to the futures market heading into week number 11. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>